This is the 10th video in our series, looking at how you set up and configure a Synology NAS running DiStation Manager 7. The main purpose of a NAS is to provide a network with a centralized location to store and share files. This is done by creating folders on our NAS that we then make shareable via DiStation Manager. However, in order to create a network share, we need to understand and configure four separate elements users, permissions, groups, and folders. So in this video, we're going to try and explain how these four elements work together in order for us to create our network shares. Let's start by taking a look at users. A Synology NAS uses four different account types, root, administrator, user, and guest. While each of these account types are designed for different roles on our NAS, when we create a new user account, we use permissions to define what type of account we have created. So in other words, when we create a user account, we need to ensure that we give the correct access permissions to that account. This means that it is a good idea to understand what each account type does and make sure that we use the appropriate permissions for any user accounts that we create. First, we have root, which is a super user account in that it has virtually unlimited access to all programs, files, and system resources on our NAS. However, as root is so powerful, by default, there can only ever be one root account. And while root does exist, it is not an account that is displayed within DiStation Manager. Instead, we can only access the root account if we use something called Secure Shell or SSH. However, because a Synology NAS is designed with ease of use in mind, a home user should never really need to use the root account. The next account type is an administrator's account, which while not as powerful as the root account, is the account type that we need to use in order to install, configure, manage, and maintain our NAS. If you remember back to when we installed DiStation Manager, it was an administrator's account that we initially created, and it is that account that we are currently using to log into DiStation Manager. So at the moment, it is our administrator's account that is the only active account on our NAS. However, you may have also noticed that we have an account called admin which while also an administrator's account, is currently deactivated. The reason this admin account exists is so that we always have a default administrator's account that will allow us to unlock and reset primary settings on our NAS should we ever make a configuration mistake or accidentally lock ourselves out of DiStation Manager. So it's worth noting that unlike the root account, if we choose to, we can either create additional administrator accounts or give an existing account administrator privileges. Finally, as administrator accounts are so powerful in that they will allow you to access other user accounts, change any system settings, and give you full access to all data stored in your network shares, your administrator's account is something that you need to protect and ensure remains secure. So we recommend that you only ever create one administrator's account and you only use that account when you want to set up or configure something on your NAS. As we have not yet created any user accounts, in order for someone to access our NAS, we will need to create an account for them to use. So it is considered good practice to create a user account for each person using our NAS. However, as a general rule, we need to make sure that user accounts are limited to only accessing the shared folders and services that we as the administrator want them to have access to. A guest account is the lowest level of account we can have on our NAS and is disabled by default. This is because a guest account is designed to specifically give someone access to resources on our NAS without them needing to have their own user account or password. So, for example, if we enable the guest account, through that account, anyone can log into our NAS and access specific services that we as the administrator want the guest account to have access to. 
However, as there are only one or two scenarios where you might want to enable a guest account, we recommend that you leave this account type disabled. As we mentioned at the beginning of this video, a NAS is really just a centralized location to store and share files. However, so that the files stored on our NAS are protected, when we create a new user account, we will have to manually assign one of three basic access permission types to the network shares that we have created. The three permission types are read write, read only, and no access. Read write permissions will allow a user to create, open, edit, and delete files and subfolders within a network share. While read only permissions will allow a user to access a network share, but only view files and subfolders. Finally, no access permissions are the default permissions given to any new user account that we create. So while we might be able to see that a network share exists, a user account with no access permissions will not be able to access its contents. If you have a large number of network shares and user accounts, manually assigning access permissions to each individual user can be time consuming and easily lead to mistakes. So to get around this, we're going to use something called groups. By default, you will find that your NAS has three pre-configured groups, administrators, HTTP, and users. So if we create and add a user account to any of these groups, we will then give that user predefined access permissions to services and resources on our NAS. The first group is the administrators group. So any user in this group will have administrator rights over our NAS. The next group is HTTP and seems to be a specialist group relating to web services and more specifically to web hosting. So in order for our NAS to be able to host a website and make it viewable to everyone, this group will need to have at least read-write permissions to two network shares, one called web and the other called web packages. The last default group on our NAS is the user group and will automatically include any user accounts that we create. The reason this account is important is that the user group is how we give our users basic access rights to certain services on our NAS. While these three default groups are important to the running of our NAS, in most instances, we will never need to use them. So instead, we're going to create a number of custom groups that we will use to either allow or deny our users access to the network shares on our NAS. When we first create a network share, we simply create a folder that we then instruct our NAS to share with the rest of our home network. However, if we intend to also use our NAS as a media server, for example, by running applications like Video and Audio Station, as these applications will automatically create network shares as they are being set up, for now, we will not be creating shared folders for any of our media files. Instead, we're going to create four network shares that we think might be useful within a typical home network. So we will be creating a financial accounts folder, a folder for the user manuals to our household appliances, a folder for software and license information, and a folder that we're going to call public that will allow us to easily swap and share files between different computers on our network. So to summarize, in this video, we took a moment to try and explain some of the main principles regarding user accounts, permissions, groups, and network shares. However, as it can be difficult to visualize how these four elements work together, over the next few videos, we will be taking a look at how we create network shares, how we create user accounts, and how we create groups to allow us to set permissions to our shared folders.